the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us as Good Hope Church members this morning via the online platform to hear your words. Thank you, Lord, for coming into this world to redeem us from the clutches of sins and raising our hopes through your resurrection story. You have proven the world wrong and scriptures true by your resurrection from the cross and have turned our sorrows into joy. We pray that you would help us to remove the suffering of our pain from the strains of our lives and also from the COVID-19 pandemic impact by your mercy. We pray especially for our bishop, pastors and members of our Sri Subang Lutheran Church members who are affected by the virus and seek your intervention to redeem them by your grace to recover speedily and restore their joy of life again. We also pray for the healing and restoration of joy in the lives of our Good Hope members who are going through challenging times in their lives today. As we gather to hear the sermon message this morning, we pray that you would help us to understand your words and restore our lives to conform to your way of life. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who takes refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The reading for this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 57, verses 7 to 10. On a lofty and high mountain you have set your bed. Even there you went up to offer sacrifice. Also behind the doors and their posts you have set up your remembrance. For you have uncovered yourself to those other than me, and you have gone up to them. You have enlarged your bid and made a covenant with them. You have loved their bid where you saw their nudity. You went to the king with ointments and increased your perfumes. You sent your messengers far off and even descended to Sheol. You are wearied in the length of your way, yet you did not say there is no hope. You have found the life of your hand, therefore you were not grieved. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 12 to 16. So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates in order to make his people holy by shedding his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp and bear the disgrace he bore. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our city in heaven, which is yet to come. With Jesus' help, let us continually offer our sacrifice of grace to God by proclaiming the glory of his name. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have with those in need, for such sacrifices are very pleasing to God. Here ends the reading of the epistle. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. The 
The Gospel text for the third Sunday after Easter is taken from the book of St. John, chapter 16, verses 16 to 22. A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I go to the Father. They said therefore, What is this that he says, a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves, about what I say, a little while, and you will not see me, and again, a little while, and you will see me. Most actually I say to you, that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. Here ends the reading of the Gospel for today. Let us pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, we praise you for who you are, because you are a good and wonderful and mighty God. Father, we just come before you, asking you to bless this time, as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Speak to us, O Lord Almighty God, as we worship you today. We just want to sing our hearts out to you, because you are worthy of all honour, you're worthy of all praise, and we just want to honor you today. Father, we just surrender every moment of this worship into your hands. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and we pray. Amen. Father in heaven. Father in heaven, how we love you. In our praises, as your people declare your mighty word, bless us.
be in, O Lord of God. Even with this pandemic that is going around, Father, you reign, you bless, and you will take care of your people, O Lord of God, from the youngest to the oldest, O Lord Almighty God. There is power in you. When we know, O Father, under your wings, we will find sheltering grace, O Father. Under your wings, O Lord Almighty God, we will find the protection that we need, O Lord of God. Father, you are a good God. We just want to surrender, O Lord of God, each one of us into your hands, O Lord Almighty King. My Jesus, my Savior.
God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us this morning to meditate on today's sermon message of your resurrection story that turned the sorrow into joy of the disciples' life. Help us to understand your teaching and transform our lives to conform to your ways and share the resurrected joy with our friends, families and the unreached. Help us to evaluate our weaknesses and rectify our sins as we walk through this journey of Christian faith. Guide us and lead us by the Holy Spirit to be prepared to enter your heavenly kingdom in your second coming. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Greetings to all of you, my dear friends of Good Hope Church members, on this third Sunday after Easter. We are Faced with the dilemma of meeting in person in the church today, however, we would like to thank God and for His grace and His mercy for being able to worship together at our own homes through this online media platform. The theme for today's sermon is The Way Home, based on the gospel text we read in John chapter 16, verses 16 to 22. And the impact it has on us Christians and believers to overcome our pains and sufferings and celebrate the joy of our resurrected Lord together. Dear friends, the sermon message today is based on an event that takes place in the upper room in Jerusalem where the disciples are gathered together with Jesus on a Thursday night for the Passover meal. That was Monday Thursday that we celebrated recently. In his lengthy valedictory discourse in John chapter 13 to 16, especially the three chapters in the Gospel of John, we noted that Jesus was preparing his disciples for the great sorrow that would follow suit in the next few hours as they would witness him being arrested, mocked, tortured and crucified dead on the cross. The disciples' world comes crashing down on them. Their hopes were dashed as they believed that Jesus was the promised Messiah of Israel who came to deliver them from the clutches of the Roman Empire as an earthly king. They never anticipated a crash landing and were shocked to see him dead on the cross the next day, that is on the Friday afternoon as predicted by Jesus himself many a times. Jesus prepares the disciples for suffering and eventually turn their sorrows into joy through his resurrection on the third day, that is Sunday of Easter, which we celebrated lately, followed by his ascension on the 40th day and returning from his father as a paraclete, which is the Holy Spirit, on Pentecost Day, which is about to come on 23rd of May this month, next month, on the 50th day. So let us examine the passage in depth. In verses 16 to 18 of John chapter 16, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying to them. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. My dear friends, the disciples were at a loss as it was beyond their comprehension and it appeared to be contradictory to them, so they gathered to discuss this matter in private. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his betrayal and death, comforts his sorrowful disciples by throwing hints that they would see him again as the risen Lord. But the disciples failed to grasp it. And this is not the first time they didn't understand him. 
we note that the phrase in a little while has been uttered by Jesus to his disciples on several occasions in the gospel of John and you know John is the favorite disciple and he was the eye witness of Jesus Christ as he was present during the passover meal and during the discourse so john was emphasizing is jesus significance when he said in a little while by jesus preempting his death and his resurrection to his disciples whom he loved most the phrase in a little while appears five times in verses 16 to 18 of john verse chapter 16 at the long discourse in the upper room and on the other occasions in John's uh, gospel if you read the earliest part prior to this event in the upper room there are three aspects of Jesus highlighting this event that is going to take place in his life that his stay on this earth is very short let's look at verse John chapter 7 verse 33 to 36 Jesus said to them I shall be with you a little while longer and then I shall go to him who sent me you will seek me and not find me and you cannot come where I am going the Jews misconstrued Jesus was going to the Greeks to teach them as usual the disciples also did not understand what Jesus meant by a little while longer I will see you and you will be with me and a little while longer you will not see me and you cannot come to the place where i am going i am going to the father so they were confused and rattled so second uh, mention of this passage of his uh, impending death and resurrection is quoted in john chapter 12 verses 34 to 35 jesus said that the son of man must be lifted up they asked jesus who is the son of man my dear friends they didn't know jesus is the prophesied messiah who was dwelling among them they were surprised and therefore when the disciples were also with jesus they took it that jesus was a messiah who has come to this world to redeem them as an earthly king they did not understand who jesus was in spite of his miracles wonders and signs and on the third occasion we can look at is john chapter 13 verse 33 jesus gives a new commandment to the disciples who were gathered in the upper room on the night of the passover meal and he says little children why he says little children because he assumed followers and believers are yet little children and they don't understand much and therefore he tells them i shall be with you a little longer you cannot come where i am going once again we noted here that despite jesus repeatedly hinting about his death and resurrection during his ministry the disciples the jewish leaders and the people who gathered around him during his ministry during his teaching all struggled to understand what he was teaching and they failed to understand the true meaning of his references if you look at the book of isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts my dear friends and sisters when the israelites were delivered from egypt they had decided to follow their own ways of thinking in spite of all the teachings of the mosaic laws and all the revelations by god and his revelation his miracles that he performed in front of them they had stiff necks they had eyes but they couldn't see their ears they couldn't hear they couldn't comprehend they couldn't understand therefore if you look at the book of isaiah chapter 6 when isaiah was called to be Uh, uh, our god's uh, prophet he was told to blind their eyes and harden their hearts as the lord is going to destroy israel so my dear friends coming back to the text as usual the disciples were afraid 
to ask him about his death. Example, if you take the ministry early part in the Galilean areas and the seaside, Jesus predicted that he would die and rise again. But his disciples were afraid to ask him to explain further. But then they were not afraid to ask him questions related to parables he was teaching when they didn't understand and the destruction of the temple and a sign as a proof to share with him when they were meeting Jesus in private. Some disciples even brought their mother to negotiate positions for themselves to sit on Jesus' side in the coming kingdom of God. The disciples who witnessed his signs, wonders and miracles as the Messiah King were probably afraid to take the lead once Jesus leaves the scene. They couldn't visualize him as a true God as prophesied in the scriptures despite being close to him for three years as they were spiritually blinded and deaf. My dear friends and sisters in Christ, in a nutshell, if you look at the summary of verses 16 to 18, Jesus says, a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. From this above text, it is noted that the phrase Jesus meant in a little while indirectly referred to his death, which is impending. That is going to happen the next day and the disciples were gathered with him. And the resurrection that is going to happen on the third day, that is Sunday. And the ascension that is going to happen on the 40th day where Jesus will be taken up to heaven in the presence and the view of the disciples. And of course, the other verse that we looked at is in the book of uh, John chapter 16, 6 verse 7, where Jesus talks about the paraclete, the coming of the paraclete in John 16, 7, where he will come as the indwelling spirit in the disciples and all his followers on the day of the Pentecost, that is the 50th day, which we'll be celebrating soon. So, my dear friends and sisters in Christ here, here, if you look at it, a little while, a little while and you will not see me means he had only a few hours to be with the disciples alive. That is on Thursday night. And he would be dead and buried in the grave by Friday afternoon. And then we see here, and again a little while, that refers to three days after his death, that is on a Sunday afternoon, they would see him alive in their midst. We just noted in one of the sermon passages recently that Jesus was present in the room where the disciples were gathered in fear. Although the room was locked, he was present physically and showed the wounds and all the signs he went through and the disciples were shocked and they were shocked initially but accepted him in glory and and they rejoiced his resurrection and they were very happy and they whatever jesus taught them became the truth and they decided to follow him and follow his teaching abundantly and my dear friends and you will see me because I go to the Father. Here, what does it mean? Here it means they shall see him ascending to heaven on the 40th day. That is, we'll be having our sermon on the 13th of May. On the 40th day, he will be ascended into heaven and he will be seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From each, where he shall come to judge it as the living and the dead. That is the second coming. But however, he also assures us that he will send his paraclete, that is the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts, to be guiding us in our life as a living God in our hearts. So my dear friends and sisters, when the disciples gathered, they failed to understand in a little while, 
especially in the verses 16 to 18, just like you and me. It is very difficult to understand in a, in a nutshell. So, on dear brothers and sisters, if you look at this, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying and their spiritual eyes and ears were shut most of the time. Isn't it uh, sounding it familiar to me and you? This is what we do every Sunday in the church. We listen to the sermons, but sometimes we don't seem to understand the context, the relevance and application. Uh, and therefore, we don't even ask the pastor to explain it. And uh, we fail to understand most of the time some of the text we try to keep to ourselves. But here, Jesus is giving the opportunity to the disciples to reveal the truth. So the disciples were trying to uh, hide it between themselves in private and they thought of finding out themselves, but Jesus knows their heart. So what's the difference between the disciple and us members who attend the church today? Do you understand the scripture? Are your eyes and ears fixed on Jesus and the scripture? Do you treat Jesus as your companion, the Holy Spirit. On the verses 19 to 21, when we go through the sermon passage, Jesus knew the hearts of the disciples, but he encouraged their faith. As the disciples were confused and discussed in private among themselves, what he meant by a little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Since Jesus is always acquainted with the disciples, he knew their thoughts very well. This refers to some prophetic verses in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. It says, He will answer before we call, and while we are still speaking, he will hear. And this is what happened. Jesus knew what the disciples are thinking and he knew what is the question they have in their mind but they did not dare to ask him. Jesus said to the disciples, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said in a little while? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus knows our hearts and our minds before we ask him. He is a silent listener to all our thoughts and a ready comforter. He did not leave his disciples at a disarray or confused state of mind. He knew what was troubling his disciples' heart and dispelled their doubts. Similarly, he knows our heart and desires very well. So, be honest and sincere in your prayer in your thoughts, in your words, and your deeds, as He is our Redeemer God. And in verse 20, Jesus assures His disciples joy. The whole point of these amazing words in chapter 16 verse 20 is that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Jesus wanted to turn his disciples' sorrow into a dominating joy. He had a purpose when he was sharing this message with them. They were full of sorrow on that night. That is the Thursday night when Jesus was sharing with them that in a little while they will see him no more. And in a little while they will see him again. And he has to go to the Father. So, Jesus wanted to change their sorrow to full joy by the Sunday morning. As he was concerned about his disciples whom he loved so much, who has been thick and thin in his godly ministry for the last three years. Jesus hints this imminent suffering and death to in a couple of hours will cause sorrow to the disciples. But the Jews will be rejoicing because they succeeded in nailing him to the cross and they celebrated in victory. But their joy was short-lived. 
for a little while as his victorious resurrection from the cross on the third day will result in great joy to his disciples as they would start preaching the gospel to other believers in droves filled with his holy spirit present as a paraclete so my dear friends and sisters in christ here jesus is definitely having a purpose in telling these disciples and preparing them for the event of a agony turned ecstasy event and was 21 to 22 he uses an analogy of a woman enduring labor pain and the sorrow a sorrow turning into joy after a child birth so we have seen uh, when a woman is in labor uh, she will go through a difficult time a period of anguish a period of pain and suffering but once a child is delivered she will no longer remember the anguish and the pain because of the joy that the newborn child has brought to her and her family and the world therefore you now have sorrow but i will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you says the lord so here is the analogy of the woman if you look into a bit deeper jesus uses this analogy of a woman in tremendous labor pain in a final hours of delivery of a child i believe there are a lot of women in our church today and there are a lot of mothers even we have gone through as parents how difficult it is for the ladies to bear the child before delivery and the pains and the sufferings and the difficult trauma they go through but she no longer remembers such pain or suffering she went through as soon as she delivers the child for the newborn child brings great joy in her life and happiness so the joy outweighs the agony jesus used this graphical illustration to compare the two stages of suffocation and joy here simultaneously just like the woman in labor experiences both sorrow and joy so would his disciples they would go through great sorrow and pain and anguish when our savior lord jesus christ is crucified on the cross on friday the next morning followed by the great joy over his resurrection on the third day that is on a sunday can you imagine the joy of the disciples on easter sunday after his resurrection as predicted by our lord on thursday night when they were at the loss as jesus foretold in a little while you shall be with me they witnessed him personally in a locked room where they gathered in fear for their life their agony turned into ecstasy my dear friends in christ we too go through disappointment in various stages of our life sometimes we don't see the light in the tunnel when expectations are not met a sick or maimed family member on a dead bed often engross our minds in anguish we fail even to understand things better on such occasions the corona virus is still taking its toll unabated it has wrecked the hopes of millions of people worldwide it has not spared our loved ones and our church either today the disciples were also faced with immense pressure after jesus death but their sorrow turned into joy when jesus rose from his death on the third day to prove the scriptures true he will not abandon you to force or forsake you as written in hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and he will never never let you alone will never let you suffer so cast your burdens on the lord as psalm 5522 says he will not not let righteous men suffer my dear friends and sisters in christ on the day of the resurrection when the disciples went to the empty tomb mary magdalene was there and she was caught by surprise by the empty tomb and she went to tell the disciples especially peter and john came running after her to witness 
and they went in silence back to the room where they were in a hideout. But eventually, Jesus comes and in their midst and appears in front of them in spite of the door being locked. He was able to prove his resurrection to them. And the disciples were in fear of their lives and were worried about what is going to happen to them. Especially the Roman uh, kingdom definitely were looking for them, his disciples to kill them. They were, a, were in a difficult state of affairs. But now their sorrow and anguish turned into joy and ecstasy. In conclusion, this section of the scripture inspires us as we noted our Lord has concern and a caring heart that gives us hope and joy to work through and walk through the trials of our life. Therefore, let us trust our Lord, spend more time in reading the scriptures and in prayer for his strength and deliverance. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we reflect on the redemption passage of suffering and resurrection of joy from your resurrection message this morning, help us to overcome our weaknesses by casting our burden on you with faith, hope, trust and prayers to move forward in life with your redeeming grace and joy to achieve your divine plan in our Christian life. Use us as your tool for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The salutation and benediction. Please stand. The Lord be with you together and with you also. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 God bless you all.